The Kölner Instagol gilding system was developed in Germany and has been on the market since the early 80s. Over the years, Kölner gilding products have been proven to be an excellent product in different climatic circumstances. Prestigious and famous objects around the world have been gilded using Kölner products, on inside as well as outside projects. With this short introduction film, we show you how to work with the Kölner Instacol system on two different objects, with transfer and loose gold leaf. Of course, this method can be applied in exactly the same way on bigger and more complicated projects. Our advice is start your gilding project today and experience the ease and the excellent results of the Kölner Instacol gilding system. I will show you how to work with the Instacol base on a surface you would like to gild. And we will do this on a smooth surface. I will also show you how to gild on a rough surface. This is a piece of stone with a rough porous surface. It is very important the surface is clean before gilding and it needs to be absolutely free of dust and grease. Best to clean the surface with a bit of ethanol or alcohol to make the surface clean. It is also very important to use the right tools. Don't just use your pig hair or sable hair brush but use a brush which was especially designed by Kölner and I will explain why. The length and the type of the hair are specially designed for working with the Kölner products. You will find it's a synthetic brush, it has very soft hair and the brush has exactly the right softness but also the right resistance to work with the Kölner products. You always start with checking the quality of the product. This here is a small container, an, a new container, but it also needs to be checked. I'll open it and you'll probably find that the, problem, the product might need to be diluted a little bit. Diluting is always done with a bit of water. All the products in the Instacol range are water-based and it is important they comply to environmental standards. It shouldn't be harmful to work with these products, often in comparison to historical products which contain a lot of harmful ingredients. When I'm checking a product, I mainly look at the consistency and if it flows well. I will test it by stirring it, stirring it well, and I mean really well. The pigment in the product can sink to the bottom a little, so it's important to stir the product thoroughly. You can see, when I let the product run off the stirring stick, it needs to run off in a nice ribbon. When it does this, it means that it will also flow well. I think this is just a little bit too thick, so I'll, I will dilute it a little bit more with a bit of water. Don't hold the container under the tap, that will always go wrong and you'll add too much. It's best to use a pipette. Most of the time, you only have to add a few drops of water. I'm just adding them and then I will stir the mixture again. When you, stir, store, a when you store a container for a while, some water will evaporate. Or when you're working with it and you leave the container open for a, for a bit, the water can evaporate. So just keep checking what the thickness of the Instacol base is. Well, this looks really well. It flows well off the stirring stick. I'm now going to apply the material. And I already explained, this is a smooth, non-porous surface. And this is a porous surface. When working on a smooth surface, you apply the material on in one good full layer. This is very important to let the material flow properly. I'll show you. This is a very important part of the Instacol system. And most people who work with the Instacol system for the first time will find that it doesn't flow that well, at least when you don't apply enough material. I'll just show you. 
when I apply it like this, you'll see the brush strokes in the material and you can see that they're not flowing very well. This means there's not enough material there. We'll just add a little bit. You will have to understand this. You will have to understand this technique very well before you will be able to work with the Instacool system. Now you can see it's getting better. You can see the Instacool is starting to flow very well. So you really need to make sure you need to apply enough material. Here you can see it's not enough. Here you can see it's not flowing enough yet. Just add a little wet in wet. Of course, you'll have to just find the middle ground. You shouldn't just pour the whole pot over your object, but do add a full layer. Well, as you can see, it's flowing very well now, and this also means the gold leaf will have a very nice luster. The golden rule is that the shine you will see in the surface is the shine you will get on your gold leaf. There, I will just put this aside to let it dry and later we'll apply the gold leaf. We'll go to the stone. The big difference with the surface I just prepared is that this is a porous surface. If I would try and prepare it the same way as the strip, the instacore would disappear into the stone. It would be soaked up. First of all, I'm going to apply an insulation layer. So a thin layer, which I dab in like this to create a thin layer on the stone. A stone like this will need two coats. You just can't do it in one go. This first layer is a sealing layer, an insulation layer on which we add a second layer, which will be the layer on which we will apply the gold leaf. We will do this this way and then leave it to dry. There. The brushes can be cleaned with water and it is best to do this immediately. When the material does dry up on your brush, you can clean it with a bit of ethanol. We will just go back to the strip because I'd like to show you it's actually flowing very nicely. I'll just get it and this is what you want to achieve. It needs to form a lovely closed layer without any brush strokes. In the meantime, the Instacall base that I applied has dried and you can test it. Never do this with your whole hand or your finger, but do it with the back of your finger. Stroke the surface to feel if it's dry. This looks really good. After testing, you shouldn't be touching the surface anymore. You should touch it as little as possible. On the rough surface, on the stone, with the porous surface, I added a second layer of Instacall. So now it has two layers of Instacall. Well, they are dry now. And before I start gilding, this layer needs to be activated with the Instacall activator. This is an important product and I will tell you a bit more about it. The activating is a very simple process. The activator doesn't need to be stirred because it's not a coloured product, it's a clear, thin product. I'll just open the container like this. You actually only need a very small amount. Often when you're working on a smooth surface like this strip, you can just use a little bit of kitchen towel, a bit of tissue. Do use good quality lint-free tissue so it doesn't leave any fluff on your product. I'll just use a, I'll just put a little insecure activator on the tissue. Don't make it too wet. Don't soak the tissue. And if you put too much activator on the tissue, you can just remove it by dabbing it off a little bit. It just needs to be a little bit moist. Just get your object you have and put the Instacore base 
on and apply a thin layer of activator, just like this. And that's it, done. And now just let it dry again. On the stone it's a little bit more difficult since the surface is a bit more rough. It's harder to apply the activator with a tissue. You can use it tissue, but you just have to dab it like this. So don't make it too hard on yourself and just use a brush to apply the activator. With a brush you can easily reach every bit on the surface like this. And with a brush you can apply the activator on the relief nice and easy. There. This now just needs to dry. It is important that the activator is completely dry before gilding. The most common mistake made is that people think I've activated the base and I'll start gilding straight away. That's not how it works. After applying the activator the layer needs to dry completely. The activator is now dried completely, which is very important. The activator really needs to be completely dry before gilding, which I'll start in a minute. I will show you how to gild with a transfer gold leaf. And I will show you how to work with a loose gold leaf. We'll use the loose leaf on the stone because it's just easier to apply loose leaf on a rough surface and we'll use the transfer on the, on the smooth surface. Transfer leaf is easy to use. The gold leaf is pressed onto the transfer paper, always like this. There is always a broader side where you hold the paper. So don't pick the transfer up on the thinner edges always use the wider edges. And now you can cut it to size using normal sharp scissors. So you don't need any special tools. This bar is about two centimeters wide. So I'll cut a few strips to size. If you want to pick up the transfer, just put your finger against your tongue to make it sticky to be able to pick it up more easily. I already told you that the activator needs to be completely dry and I'm sure it is. I often look at the product in a sort of a grazing light but just wait for another 10 to 15 minutes and it will be fine. It's important to get an adhesion strength which is hardly sticky. So don't assume that the surface is now sticky. It needs to be slightly rough or stiff and you can test this. The moment you drag the back of your finger over the surface it needs to squeak. I will try to show you what it should sound like. This is exactly the right sticking strength that you need for the gold leaf. So not more, just rough enough to adhere. It should not be sticky. A sheet of transfer gold leaf, it doesn't really get any simpler when gilding. We will use special tissues, which are developed by Kölner, the Kölner tissue. With these tissues, you can transfer the gold onto the surface you want to gild, and you can also use them to polish the gold. These tissues are very pleasant to use. When you gild a lot, the tissues are also available on a roll, so not just as a single tissue, but on a roll where you can cut bits that you need. I will now apply the gold to the bar by pressing it onto the surface with the tissue. I'm going to fold the tissue. I'm folding it to get a relatively firm cloth with some flexibility and bounce so it will be good to work with. So don't use the tissue as an open tissue. Just fold it a few times, preferably with the logo on the inside, and then you can work with it. I will now apply the first strip of gold leaf to the bar, and what I would like to show you is how to overlap the gold. You always overlap gold leaf 
and I will show you how to correct a mistake. I will try to do this slowly so it's a bit easier to follow. I'm laying the gold down, gold side down onto the bar and put my finger at the edge of the transfer paper and I use a tissue and by pressing it down quite firmly the gold gets transferred to the object. And you'll see the gold is letting go of the transfer paper. I will put these little leftover bits to one side. I'll use them later to repair little mistakes. I will just leave the gold like this for now and I will get the second piece of transfer. I will make a deliberate mistake in the gold. I'll just scratch the gold with my nail so I can show you how to correct the mistake. You always have to lay the gold with a little overlap. So I'll overlap it by, with a millimetre or two. And now I'll use a tissue again and I'll press it down like this. It looks very simple and I won't say it's very difficult. I'm just picking this piece up again. Look, you can see here I made a little mistake and here as well, there's a little bit of gold missing. And it's important to repair these mistakes immediately. I will explain why. The moment you apply activator, you have approximately one hour of open time, of working time, to apply the gold leaf. After an hour, you will have to reactivate the base again. You can reactivate parts you have activated already, but you, you should never get any activator on the gold you've already applied. It will stain the gold, which can't be removed. So you need to work very carefully. I will show you the big trick. Here you can see there's a bit of gold missing. I'll show you another time. You can see the yellow surface where the gold hasn't been applied. Now I'm just going to add a little piece of gold, like this. I'm holding the gold, I'm holding the gold in place. Get my tissue, and now I'm pressing the tissue onto the gold, making this movement, like tightening and unscrewing a screw. It means I'm pressing the gold into all directions. If I would make this move, it would pull all the gold apart, and I need to press it into all directions. Here was another bit that wasn't properly gilded. There. And I'll put this just aside. Okay, pay attention. Now I will press this down onto the gold. I'll just keep using the tissue. Here is where the overlap is. And this is where I made the repair. These are the areas that lit a little bit more attention. I'll just press the tissue down onto this spot and again I'll make that same movement, a circular movement. And then I'll polish the gold. Here is where the overlap is. If I would make this movement, I would pull the gold away. I need to rub the gold together and then the overlapping join there will always be a join, will be less visible. I'll put the tissue onto the gold and rub the gold together like this, and then I'll polish it. When polishing, you'll immediately see this beautiful gloss. That is a special property of the Instacore. It creates enormous luster, and that also means a good outdoor durability because Something that's glossy doesn't attract much dirt. I hope you can see, I'll just mirror my fingers into the surface. The gloss is really mirror-like. This is how to apply transfer gold leaf. You need sharp scissors, a tissue, and off you go. For working with loose gold, you need some more tools. We'll continue with gilding the piece of stone. It has a rough surface, which is harder to work on. 
with a transfer gold leaf. I will show you later how to gild the stone easier using loose gold. But you might not have loose gold and you do want to gild with transfer gold leaf. It is possible. Kölner has developed a very nice tool called the Kölner tool. It has two sides. One side has a slanted edge like a triangle, which you can use very well for V-cut lettering on memorials, for example. The other side is pointy. The tool is made of rubber and you can use it to push the gold into the rougher surface. And I will show you. I'll get a piece of transfer gold and I'll put it on the piece of stone. And it will, of course, tear a little bit because the surface is rough. First I'll push it onto the stone with the colour tissue and I'll just massage it onto the surface. But I can't reach all the lower laying parts. Uh, the surface is just too, has just too much relief. Then I'll just get the insicle tool and like this I can get the gold into all the nooks and crannies of the stone by padding it. Just pad it onto the stone. I just removed the transfer paper and I can see not everything has been gilded. With the insicle tool you can just pick up a little bit of gold like this and press it onto the surface. And the beauty of the surface like this with so much relief is that the light will reflect onto the object from all sides. I'll show you. I'm pressing the gold onto the stone with the tissue. That's a nice bit of gold. It's very pliable. It's actually a relatively soft material. I'm just going to add the last piece of gold over here. There's still a little bit missing. Push it down with the tissue and then take the tool and pat it down onto the stone to make it transfer off the paper. Press it down again, again with the tool. Just press it down with the tissue again. Using the same circular motions to polish the gold onto the stone. And you can already see the enormous luster appear. And because the light is reflecting off the stone from all sides, it's absolutely marvellous. It's just a beautiful, very beautiful gloss. But actually, by gilding a rough surface with a transfer gold leaf, you're making it more difficult for yourself. Gilding a rough surface with the loose gold, like I have here, is easier. You can only gild indoors with the loose gold because otherwise it will just blow away. So you need to do this in your workshop. There's still a little bit of stone left over and I will show you the technique of the gilding with the loose gold leaf. We will now gild the other side of the stone with the loose gold leaf. For working with the loose gold, you need a few tools. First of all, the gilder's cushion, which on which you will cut the gold to size. It's a cushion made of calf leather. Kölner manufactures these cushions and, and they're very high quality. You also need a gilder's knife to cut your gold with. It's not possible with a normal knife from your kitchen drawer. You really need a special gilder's knife. And what you also need is a gilder's tip. This is a brush like this, made of squirrel hair. And it's a very soft brush and we will use it to pick up the gold and lay it onto the project. These are the tools you really need when you're working with a loose gold leaf. I will now show you how to transfer a sheet of loose gold out of the booklet and onto the gilder's cushion. There are several methods, but I'll show you one. Your knife needs to be completely clean. I normally clean it with a little bit of ethanol. But be careful, 
it's a very sharp knife, but it does need to be completely grease free. That is enormously important. And it goes as follows. You put your knife onto the gold leaf and then you tilt your, the knife towards you like this. So not the other way, towards yourself. And then you blow the gold over your knife. Don't blow too hard, your gold will fly away. It's something to get used to. What you can also see is that I'm holding my thumb on top of the booklet. This is also very important because otherwise the underlying sheets will also get blown away. I will show you. I will start blowing a little. The knife tilted on top of the gold and I blow the, the gold over the knife. The gold leaf will hang from the knife and I'll put it on a gilded cushion like this. I'll roll it off the knife. You will see it will hardly ever lay flat the first time around. It will still be a little bit crease. And I can simply pick it up, up again and I will use the bit of air resistance. And this way I can roll it off the knife again and when I think it's laying flat enough, I'll stop moving it around. The only thing I'll still do is blow onto the gold in a straight angle from the top. And I will do this now and you'll see the leaf gold will straighten itself out. There, now it's exactly how I want it. And now I can cut the gold to size with the gilder's knife. This goes like this. I'll put the knife onto the gold, a few short cuts, and then one long one. Everything needs to stay nice and clean. You shouldn't touch anything anymore. Just put it to one side. We still have the piece of stone which to gild with the loose gold leaf. I'll just reposition it so you get a good view. Now we'll use a special brush, the gilder's tip. I already told you it's made of squirrel hair which is very soft. And now we have to charge the gilder's tip to make the gold stick to the brush. I normally do this with a tiny bit of amount of Vaseline. I have here a, a small pot of Vaseline. I will just rub a little on the back of my hand. No lumps, just a tiny amount to make it a little shiny. I'm going to take the brush and rub the brush over my hand. This is always a bit exciting because if there's too much Vaseline on the gilder's tip, the gold will stick to it once I want to transfer it to my object. But we'll see. If there is too much Vaseline on it, you can wipe it off on a piece of tissue. I will now show you how to apply the loose gold leaf onto a rough surface prepared with the Instacall. I will use the tissue again. So the Instacall tissues keep playing an important part. I will pick up the gold with the gilder's tip like this and I'll transfer it to the project. And the moment it touches the surface, I'll lightly press it down with the tissue and the gold will let go of the brush. The big benefit is now that you don't have any transfer paper. It's much easier to shape the gold onto the surface. Another piece actually is actually quite easy. You just need to work calmly. And there shouldn't be a draft in the room. That is very important too. There, I've filled the entire surface. Put the brush away and now I can press down the gold again with the tissue. Like this. And then polish the gold. And here you can also see the beautiful gloss appear. So there are two methods with the Instacall system. You can work with the transfer gold as well as the loose gold leaf. And that's it.